to leave on a note of such, it's just like the air in the house is so heavy. There's so much that's not being said between these two people. And the fact that- Very bad timing to not connect with your wife. Yeah, to be so completely disconnected. And I feel like, you know, it was maybe talked around a little bit. It's the, what, the next day, a couple days later or something? And and to just be leaving on this note, it's, yeah. it's the worst possible scenario. It doesn't feel good. And I don't think that they're accustomed to being in this place with one another. No, no. And also to not have, now that she's gone on a tour for two weeks, which really isn't a long period of time, yeah. but to not have that resolution or, or, or conversation of it's, yeah. you know, we're okay. I mean, but it's also, this is something that's been bubbling up and boiling between them since Miguel and Shelly broke up and all that, you know, it's it's that Jack and Rebecca are okay, mm -hmm. that they're gonna be okay, mm -hmm. you know? So when they are not quite connecting, it's, yeah, it's, it's unnerving. I, I almost feel like Jack and Rebecca don't know how to see their way out of it because they've never really been in this situation yeah. before. I don't think they know how to navigate these waters. How yeah. do we, how do we get back, like, how am I leaving the house and you're not like embracing me and like totally. just scooping me up and giving me a big kiss and like yeah. we're looking into each other's eyes like go out there and crush it and have the best time ever and I'm your man and I can hold it down here at the house. The fact that like that yeah. doesn't happen and Rebecca just gets a peck on the cheek is and Jack doesn't help her with her luggage and all of it, it's just like, ugh, it's the yeah. worst possible scenario. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. It wasn't fun to film either. That's never been I fun know. to film. Like, Manny and I, we're, we're very tight. We're very, like, like our chairs are next to each other. We yeah. talk a lot when we're in between takes and everything and, and whatnot. And the days that we have to play very distant, I know. they're just not fun to film. Don't you all look ready for a funeral? No. Not even a smile for funeral. All right, well, thanks for coming. So if you need anything, cooking, cleaning, you need help with as well. I don't know anything about wills, but I'm willing to take an online course. Uh... Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. Come on, let's get started. <laughs> all right. Oh. Oh. Those oh. oh, aren't coming back from Rebecca's point of view, like there is such a, a deep, like deep misgivings about even being there as if like she shouldn't be invited. She has no business being there. I mean, celebrating the life of a man who, who, who you know, she completely altered the course of this man's life and his relationship with his child. And I just think, the entire occasion was really unsettling because there's so much to sort of, so much to, oh gosh, be said between Randall and Rebecca that hasn't been addressed at this point. And I don't think she expected it to sort of happen during the funeral, funeral. Um, so it just like, it's just so loaded. You know, I think that's something that's really amazing about <clears throat> The writing of the show is that there is so much joy and there is so much sadness ultimately in life, but where your heart is broken, you're also being held with very careful hands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that kind of so the summation of all of that, and you know, especially with William's death and, and then thinking about Jack's death and the remembrance of that and, you know, and everything that Beth says about, about uh, life itself in that speech. You know, it's it's something that kind of, you know, is is soaked through the, the cloth of what this show is, mm -hmm. and and feels very fundamental to what the show is. Mm -hmm.